very, very nice campground here. And the sites are pretty spacious. Well, this is the SKP's Rainbow Plantation in Somerdale, Alabama. A pretty good deal, especially if you're a member. And this is going to be my home base from which tomorrow I am going to circle around Mobile Bay and see as much as possible. Particularly what I missed the last time I was here in late November of 2018. take that ferry that I missed a month ago. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, I was here in late November and I just didn't time it right and I missed the ferry. Very picturesque, all these uh, houses here on stilts. Uh, Fort Morgan. And here we are at the ferry terminal. It is $16 for passenger vehicles up to 21 feet long. And for RVs and longer vehicles, it is 35. Although I saw a sign earlier that said that they're not taking those today. So it is good that I came just with a truck. In the winter, the ferry only runs every 90 minutes. That's why I missed it the last time. Well, while we wait, let's check out the area around the terminal. There are several oil rigs. There comes our ride. The Colorado on a ferry for the first time. There in the distance is Fort Morgan, which I visited the last time around. I think we've got a stowaway here. There's the Sand Island Lighthouse. It's original construction dating back to 1873. There's the Dauphin Island Bridge, which we will take later today. that possibly be part of Mobile over the horizon? Hmm, maybe not. I've always been fascinated by oil rigs and other intricate or complicated or inaccessible pieces of equipment or heavy machinery. There's the second ferry, the one that only runs in the high season. And there's Fort Gaines, which we're not gonna visit today, another time perhaps.
and the stowaway rode with us all the way across the bay. I haven't even had breakfast today, so let's take care of that. This place seems to be nice enough. The Sunset Grill kind of reminds me of the Florida Keys, sort of. It is 12 o'clock and I am the only one here. And I've got a view, sort of. I ordered the shrimp po'boy, which is actually really good, if a little salty perhaps. Definitely a very quiet morning here in Dauphin Island. Let's fly the drone real quick. Let's go to the public beach, although it's, it is not necessarily beach weather today. It's still in the, probably, I have no idea what temperature we have right now, but it's probably either high 40s or low 50s Fahrenheit. Let's go all the way to the west end the public beach, which will be the end of this road. love all these houses on stilts. Perhaps one day I will rent me one for a couple of days at the beach, you know. We've reached the end of the road. Dauphin Island. Pretty, isn't it? Looking towards the other side, the west, it isn't much more than a narrow strip of fine sand. And if it wasn't just a little bit chilly, I would be totally digging it. Perhaps I'll come back in the summer, bring my bathing suit. Let's explore on foot a little bit. This is the western end of uh, Dauphin Island. And you can see the ocean to that side. That's actually the, and more ocean, actually. That's the Gulf of Mexico, not ocean. There's quite a bit of evidence of storm damage. Hurricane Michael, perhaps? I mean, it looks like storm surge must have been pretty high around here. Very nice, fine, white sand, as it should be. It is the Gulf of Mexico, after all. Hmm. Apparently destroyed by some hurricane.
going over the Dauphin Island Bridge now. Our next stop is Bayou La Batre, filming location where one Forrest Gump became a shrimp boat captain. This part of town, not what I expected. This is Bayula Patri. Now we're talking. This looks a little more like the Bayula Patri I imagined, with all the shrimping boats. Let me tell you something, we're kind of wasting time here. I haven't done enough research, so let's go down to Mobile, which should be the main event here today. The first thing I want to see in Mobile is the USS Alabama. Here we have an awesome B-52 Stratofortress. Well, let's go see the USS Alabama first. Let's go in. Well, here we are, the USS uh, Alabama. It says two ships, so let's go that way. Oh, this is so embarrassing. I didn't notice there is something stuck to my lens. You see, the lining inside my camera bag is slowly disintegrating. By the way, the ticket is uh, $15 and it covers the ship, the submarine and the aircraft pavilion. So that's a pretty good deal. I am really looking forward to seeing the ship. This should definitely be the highlight of my day, and I hope yours too. Battleship USS Alabama here was commissioned August 16th, 1942, and it earned nine battle stars. When you pay the entrance fee, they give you a guide with three color-coded self-guided tours, and we're going to do all of them, beginning with the red tour. There, tour entrance, it must be through here. We begin by going down below decks on these steep stairs. Here we have the engineer's office, and I really like how they have strategically placed speakers all over the ship, playing music from the era or sound effects. Number three is the bakery. I think the soundscape creates a great ambience that, together with the props, it greatly enhances the experience. I wonder if these are ovens. This is the crew galley. I love it how they have like galley sound effects, like pots and pans clanking. That, together with the mannequins and the fake food, gives you a sense of being there and how it might have been when the ship was in service. Okay, the mannequins are a little creepy. This here at number 8 is called the scullery, which is where you would wash the dishes. Scullery. And now I believe we have to go downstairs to number 9, to the crew's birthing space. Here we go. Mm. Doesn't look very comfortable, does it? And they have some lockers here, too. Number 10 is the brig. Well, here we are. This is obviously the brig. So, if you misbehave, they put you behind bars. 
Number 12 is the Taylor Shop. Okay, here's a better view of the Taylor Shop. Very, very cool. Number 14 is the Barber Shop. Gotta love the sound effects. Mr. Mott. Oh, another view of the laundry. Water closet and washroom. Before we get to the water closet and the washroom, they have some exhibits here. There's the crew birthing space, we were there already. Sometimes the tour feels like a labyrinth, a little hard to navigate. You really have to pay attention to the numbers. Not very private, but hey, they had toilet paper. And uh, here's the other side. Hmm, I can see urinals haven't changed much in the past 80 years or so. The mirrors are kind of useless though, at least they won't break easily. Definitely not handicap accessible here. Let's continue. Okay, we have to go back upstairs. Here. Coming up next is the crew mess area. Here we have a cafeteria-style food-serving line, like a buffet, I guess. And they even have a soda fountain. This is the Chief Petty Officer's birthing space. Well, as you can see, the Chief Petty Officers didn't have it all that much better than the crew. And uh, here's the mess, I guess. An exhibit with some of the different nuts. This is the CPO mess. That's where they made mess. Where they ate. 21. Ship store. This is where you buy your cigarettes and all the good stuff. Well, this is the, the crew memorial room here. We continue walking around the Master at Arms birthing. Once again, the crew galley with the fake food, creepy mannequins and cool, super cool sound effects. Canned goods storage. Here's the chief master at arms stateroom. Fascinating, fascinating to see. Ooh, this would be the butcher's shop. Yep, yum, grass-fed prime beef. This is the end of the red tour and the beginning of the green tour. We begin the green tour here at the incinerator. Here's one of the offices. Very cool to see the typewriter and some other equipment. And I believe these are the store's division offices. Uh, I see some film reels on the floor over there. There's another crew berthing space, and here what seems to be the officer's galley. This is the officer's galley, perhaps a uh, slightly better food. This is the warrant officer's pantry, and this is the warrant officer's mess. Well, yeah, living conditions definitely improve as you go up in rank. Hmm, I think I'm lost. Anyways, here is the Iwo Jima exhibit. And I think I might have made a wrong turn somewhere. Here's an equipment uh, locker. And the Combat Information Center, which is actually fascinating. To see the latest technologies in the 1940s. The central station, where the ship could be steered and controlled from. It is a massive tour, and I think at some point, as I said, I must have made a wrong turn, but let me go down this spiral staircase. This is the number two barbet at the base of the gun turret. Let's go back up. Next, we're going into the medical section, doctor's office. Clerical office, bacteriological lab, dispensary, the surgical dressing station, the 
Here's the main operating room. Dentist offices haven't changed all that much either. Still scary, kind of. Fascinating stuff, let me tell you. Flooding station. Radio Central. Oh, that's cool. This way. I think we're almost done with the green tour. Not the degaussing room. Here they have a diving exhibit. Very, very cool. This in turn forces down the piston, sending air to the have a hollow You have to continually turn this to make sure he has enough air. Here's the oil and water testing lab. The blacksmith shop. Okay. And this, this is the end of the green tour. All we have left here is the yellow tour that takes place mostly outdoors actually, but it begins here with a movie. Then here's the officer's wardroom and they have this display here with the ship's silver service. Silver service display. So this is part of the tour, okay, four. Number four, here are the officers' staterooms. Number four, officers' stateroom. Hmm, this one has bunk beds. Alright. We continue walking through the bowels of the ship. But now, we are going to walk outside. By the way, they do have modern restrooms here for the guests. Such a beautiful afternoon. These here are the 20mm machine guns. I think we're supposed to crawl in here, the number one gun turret. This is really fascinating and kind of tight in here. I'm glad I've got the wide angle camera. Tight squeeze out of there. Let's see what else there is. Now we're going to this area, which is written for Castle, but it is abbreviated and pronounced Foxel, and it is basically the bow of the ship. And here we have some more machine guns, and you can see the big guns behind me. Yep, it's a pretty cool view from here, and makes you appreciate the ship as a whole. Yeah. Pretty cool views of the city as well. Definitely an imposing ship, isn't it? Anyways, let's continue exploring. Next, we're going to see the number two turret. Here we are. Very similar, I want to say almost identical to turret number one.
you would think they would have made it easier for them to... Here's the 40 millimeter gun. And um, let's step inside. And the first thing we're going to see to the right is the chaplain's cabin. Check it out, the captain's dining room. And at the end of the corridor, the captain's cabin. Okay, the Mitsubishi air conditioning unit here might be a little bit of an anachronism, but I guess the southern Alabama summers can be a little warm and humid. This here is the flag plot room, the tactical and navigational center of the ship. And here it is from a different angle. Coming up next, the Battle Bridge. Here's the navigation bridge. As we reach one of the highest points, it is the end of the self-guided tour. The sun's coming down quickly. We may not have time to see much more of the city today. But to me, this alone was totally worth it. Well, since I'm not gonna have time to see all those might as well. This was a very well presented tour, if at times a little difficult to navigate perhaps, uh, but you know, they made the extra step like to put like sound effects in the different, in different rooms. So yeah, definitely if you come to Mobile, this would be one of the things to do. We only have about half an hour left, so let's see the submarine and the planes and then let's see what else we can do. The sun's coming down real quick. Let's do the aircraft pavilion first. They have all kinds of planes and exhibits from different wars. Unfortunately, I'm having to rush a little bit through this part of the exhibit because honestly, time is running out. As usual, I try to do too many things in just one day, which actually gives me an excuse to return to Mobile one of these days. This battleship park alone deserves almost an entire day. They do have a small section dedicated to 9-11.
have that flight simulator back there, but I don't have time today, unfortunately. I want to see the, the USS drum. Torpedo room. Mark 14 torpedo. Photon torpedoes. Oh, it's a shower. Echo sounding equipment. I guess this must have been like officers' beds since they are kind of private. Hmm, the mess hall. Let's continue going through this narrow corridor here. The USS Drum here was commissioned in 1941. Gatto class, and the oldest of her class still in existence. She earned 12 battle stars during World War II. Unfortunately for this one I don't have like a detailed guide, so I'm just wandering through the ship, exploring nearly every nook and cranny. <laughs> Reminds me of my cabin at the cruise ship. When I mention it reminds me of my cabin at the cruise ship, I am referring to that one time in 1992 when I worked for a week as a DJ on the SS Dolphin 4 out of Port of Miami. I shared a tiny little cabin with the assistant cruise director. Actually, I feel like saying 20 degrees down bubble or some other submarine dialogue term I've heard in submarine movies. By the way, I love submarine movies. So to me, this is really, really cool. Hey. There's our chef. Pretty big ship, actually. Larger than I expected. Group quarters here. The head. I bet you this is the engine room. The big diesels.
And this is more torpedoes. We've made it to the aft torpedo room, and this is pretty much the end of the ship. As I come out, the sun is about to set, and the park is about to close. Well, made it with five minutes to spare. It's 5 p.m. Which means, no chance to see Mobile during the daytime today. It is a pretty big park with lots to see. I definitely didn't allocate enough time today. Well, let's go and see a little bit of Mobile before it's too late. Two months ago, when I went to the Fairhope Pier, I had a really good IPA by Haint Blue Brewing Company. And that's where we are right now. But as much as I was looking forward to this, all of a sudden I am not in the mood. I am actually pretty tired from the long day, so I'm probably just going to drive back to the RV park. You know, one of those things, there's no bar, so it's... I didn't want to sit by myself at a sofa, drinking a beer. So I'm just gonna cruise around downtown and then back to the RV park. people had told me that Mobile was like a mini New Orleans, and uh, no offense to Mobilians, but I don't see it. Perhaps it is nighttime, perhaps I'm not in the correct part of town, but what it is known for is having the oldest organized Mardi Gras in the United States, so that's gotta count for something, right? I am obviously gonna have to come back here at some point, perhaps for Mardi Gras. It is actually going to be the first Bucky's outside of Texas, and it will be open by the time you watch this.
Bon appétit. Ooh, that's big. the trash and now we continue driving to the west I was a little under the weather uh, yesterday especially and the day before yesterday but now the weather is under me I think I'm, uh, I'm gonna be fine of course <laughs> leaving the, the plantation here the, the SKP's rainbow plantation going towards uh, New Orleans, no, not New Orleans, the state of Louisiana. Tonight we're gonna camp somewhere in Louisiana. I uh, don't know where yet. Enter Mississippi. Welcome to Crossing Border. Entering Mississippi. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to Mississippi. There should be a nice big sign coming up. I don't know if you saw the sign, but the Mississippi Welcome Center apparently has a dump station, so that's good to know for next time. Oh, really dumped. There it is, dump station, right here if you need it, you know where it is. Well, thank you Mississippi for having dump stations at your rest areas. RVs all over the country appreciate that. Anyways, here comes Louisiana. Getting ready to leave and settle for a Walmart parking lot, I realized, you know, why do the citizens of Louisiana pay taxes to have a welcome center, right? I'm at the welcome center. So I asked, uh, asked uh, in there, and um, Southern Hospitality, by the way, totally a thing, very super nice people in there, and uh, they recommended a couple of states parks in a nearby. Mile, merge onto I-10 West. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay at a, at a Louisiana State Park. And uh, it's kind of late, so we're not going to be able to do much today. But I'm going to find out if I can do like a slightly late checkout. So I can... Oh, that's the sun. So we can do something perhaps tomorrow. On the next video, we are going to New Orleans for breakfast. And then... Then we're going to drive cross-country all the way to Quartzsite, Arizona. Mm -hmm. 